Welcome to The Geek in Review, the podcast focused on innovative and creative ideas in the legal profession. I'm Greg Lambert, and I am going solo this week. Uh, Marlene uh, has a day job that sometimes gets in the way of, of our recording, so I'm stepping in for her. But uh, this week for our Love and Legal Tech feature, we have with us Alexis Heyman, who's Director of Business Development at Concilio, and Jeff... Let me make sure I get this right, Jeff. Jeff Nimzura, uh, who is discovery attorney at Google. Jeff, did I did I come close to that? Nimzura, nailed it. All right, perfect. This, this is going to going to be getting off to a great start. So, uh, Alexis and Jeff, welcome to the Geek and Review. Thank you. So, I wanted to uh, and Alexis, I'll I'll start with you. Can you tell us a, a little bit more about what you do there at Concilio? Yeah, so I'm actually fairly new at Concilio, um, but my role is to develop new partnerships, relationships with both the law firm side and corporate um, in-house practice um, for Concilio. Concilio is a global leader in um, people process and technology um, legal services. Roots are in e-discovery, but uh, we also have an incredibly uh, robust advisory and flex talent placement. So it's a really great uh, role to get to know the current state of legal practice and find you know, be able to offer those solutions that uh, are really impactful, uh, sort of a problem first solutions following model, which is great. Um, and so I'm I'm just out here. Well, I'm out there in the Bay Area um, right now, just uh, opening those doors and and getting to know the industry. Right there on. Yeah, the I was gonna say you're you're so new. Have you even seen your office yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, uh, I, my team is amazing. They've been so generous to uh, make time to spend with me. So it's been very, very cool. Terrific. Hey, Jeff, uh, tell us a little bit about what what you do there at Google. Sure, I'm a discovery attorney. I advise on all things discovery as part of a large team of in-house attorneys. Um, I primarily focus these days on regulatory litigation and investigations. Um, um, but I've had the opportunity to work with all sorts of general litigation, um, patent employment, all sorts of things, and and to apply um, technology and workflows and to try and give sound advice to our outside counsel and a very busy docket. Oh. Well, bef- before we guys, before we get into your story, um, for those that are watching the video here, uh, tell us where you are because I see palm trees, I see mountains, I see desert. So, yeah, yeah we're a long way from the <laughs> Bay Area where we're usually rooted, but we're out in a in a greater San Bernardino County in a little area village town. I like area unincorporated area <laughs> okay. known informally as Wonder Valley. Um, definitely recommend it for anyone who's uh, visiting out the Joshua Tree area. We um, put down some roots here during COVID and it's become, we have a little cabin out here and uh, we're doing our spring break with our kids and and one of our kids' friends. It's it's just some other friends are coming to visit. Um, <laughs> this is our, like, this was my dream to come to the desert. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, it, look, it looks terrific, and this is the perfect time of the year to to be out there before it gets too hot. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'm right, definitely well, going to have a little sunburn on this side. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> Gentlemen, as always, is making sure I get 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 the proper Thank amount of so shade. Much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my my wife is the same way. She has taught me. She uses an umbrella as a sunscreen, mm-hmm. and she's taught me to walk in her shadow. Um, that way, you know, she doesn't, she makes sure that she uh, gets the sun blocked off of herself. Very smart. <laughs> very smart. <laughs> so um, tell me a little bit, uh, Jeff, uh, how, did, how did the two of you meet? We met um, in the old fashioned way um, in person. Um, I was a graduate no student. Online, no online dating. <laughs> <laughs> We've known each other long enough that that wasn't really in the cards. When I met you, okay. I was like, oh, you have internet at your house? <laughs> <laughs> um, I was I was a graduate student and she was an undergrad. And we met at, I, I stress to include that I don't think it was officially either a bar or a restaurant. It was more like the, the ground floor of an apartment building that served drinks. Um, it's a very, very college towny sort of thing. 
In Cleveland, Ohio. In Cleveland, Ohio, ah. um, uh, near the, the campus of Case Western Reserve University. Um, and uh, I was immediately fascinated by her. Um, it took a little bit longer on her side of the equation. So we were friends for quite a long time and yeah. and got real close uh, as people uh, before, you know. Long before law school or anything like that, <laughs> I thought I was going to go to school for art history, for art restoration. Um, I didn't really have any qualifications to do that, but it, it looked really great. Just a gallant And then dream. you were going to go be a PhD yeah. in religion. Mm-hmm. And neither of those things happened. Because, yeah, because my father <laughs> life, stepped in. Life gets in the way. Well, Ed Heyman got in the way. Uh, my dad, is, is, you'll probably hear us refer to him quite a bit, but he, uh, the late Edward Heyman was a, a, an enormous influence on both of us. Um, sort of the patron saint of our <laughs> early days. <laughs> <laughs> So, well, Marlene's going to gonna regret not being on this because uh, Case Western is where she went to law school. Oh, um, wow. So That's she, where Jeff yeah. went to law school. Yeah. So uh, you, you were probably there at different times together. So, <laughs> so um, I, I know, tell us a little bit about, you know, how this progressed and then how you, you know, got away from a, a doctorate in, in uh, religious studies and an uh, art degree to where you are now how did how did you kind of wind your way into the uh, we'll call it the legal tech business B. Desmond will you close the refrigerator for um for me um yeah as as Alexis mentioned I'm I was finishing up my master's degree trying to get ready for these doctoral programs had not actually done a survey of the job market and the actual opportunities out there um and started having practical conversations um, uh, right around that time um, and realized, no, this, I, I don't actually want this enough. And I'm having a really hard time learning ancient Greek. Um, <laughs> so I, uh, I sort of just stumbled into law school the way I think a lot of, um, you know, uh, focused people who struggle with STEM do. Um, and, uh, and so I wasn't a, a person who, who landed in, uh, in law school with a particular dream or goal. It was a practical choice, um, which in retrospect um, was a really good way to approach that, particularly because I graduated into the Great Recession where we had to be really creative with the job market. Um, so I have no regrets whatsoever. Um, and uh, and I don't know how far you want to go on the story at the time, but as I said, I graduated into a really difficult job market. And, uh, and that really was the impetus for how I became a discovery professional. Um, and, uh, basically I followed the, you know, whatever you are, be a good one, uh, mantra, um, and, and did my very best and created a career out of it. And we can dig in more on that, but I'll, I'll let Alexis answer her side of the question. Yeah. Uh, Alexis, how did, how did you wind your way into legal Yeah. Tech? So I had always worked in my dad's practice and in his businesses, plural, um, he owned a, he owned and operated a, a fairly large title insurance company in Cleveland, Ohio, Rockwell title. And I was, uh, maybe five or six when he started it, where I was pushing in, um, the old Apple computers because his idea was, Hey, we're going to bring computers into this. We're going to, we don't have to do this. We don't have to be miserable. That was sort of his, his mantra was, you don't have to be miserable. Um, and he'd actually brought these solutions to his then current employer, which was one of the big national companies. And they said, no, this doesn't make any sense. And he was like, I'll just do it by myself. I'll just do it on my own. And he was, right. he was not somebody who could really work for other people. And he could barely work with other people. Um, but he could work with me. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, I, I had just kind of been very aligned with his vision um, for having autonomy over how I spent my days. Um, and so as I, as I was progressing through school, um, and I met Jeff and I started to sort of mature into, into a vision for my adult life, um, I actually had a, the wonderful fortune to, uh, meet, uh, now, a now incredibly, uh, prominent civil rights attorney, Jacqueline Green, at, who is now partner at Freeman Gilbert, but we were just little classmates together. And mm-hmm. she was a, an enormous influence as far as, um, you know, having me keep some mindset towards uh, contributing to the world around me. 
And so um, I hope that she hears this because she's just a, an incredibly uh, balancing influence in my life. Um, and uh, as I was graduating, you know, I'm thinking, okay, I want to have some autonomy. I want to have some kind of insight about how the, the world operates. Um, I want to be able to have impact. And, uh, you know, between Jacqueline and my dad saying, you know, you get this JD, you don't have to, you know, it doesn't, I don't, you don't have to, you don't have to do the lawyer thing, but if you get this, you're, tw- I, was, I don't know, 23, 22, 23, it's three years of your life. Just get through it. Uh-huh. Um, and so I, I went to Temple University, which is a big public interest school, um, which is incredibly motivating to me. Um, and I, and I, I understand that legal tech often is very far afield, especially at the moment from a lot of the public interest work. Um, but you know, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of opportunity. There's a lot of opportunity and it was really, um, it became prominent in my life. It was always the idea that you don't have to be miserable while you're working. You, there are tools that can make life better and how can you make the world better around you? Mm -hmm. Um, were the two kind of guiding principles for me, um, and how did I get in specifically? Yeah, how, how am did, I now like firmly how, in, in how, legal how tech? Did, how did you not go and take over your dad's practice and instead yeah. or, or where you are now? So I did do a lot of, uh, I did some community building. I worked for some um, prominent campaigns, including the Obama 2012 campaign. With that same kind of mindset of, um, how can I use my skills that I've learned in law school and my passion for the world around me? And uh, even in the Obama campaign, they had started to use some some really cool database technologies that were directed to the end user. Um, so things powered by uh, PeopleSoft, um, which if you're like really old school tech, you kind of remember. Um, mm-hmm. And I did take over a lot of my dad's work. Um, I worked on a lot of uh, with a lot of his clients on their legal and non-legal issues. Um, but my father passed away and I shifted and I had a baby right after we, we had a baby, I guess, uh, <laughs> yes. right after. And I did say, okay, well, it's time to, it's time. Ed's gone. It's time to do my own thing. Um, and I started taking cases on my own. Um, I actually didn't even bother to get licensed in Ohio until then. Um, and I immediately was hit with huge discovery just you know I, I started taking some um plaintiff side employment cases hmm. and asking for all this discovery because i was told by my managing attorney yeah it's just like we're gonna really push them but then i didn't know how to review my what yeah. was handed you know i didn't know what to do with what i asked for um and luckily i had jeff <laughs> who um kind of explained this is how we review documents here um and gave me a recommendation to look at everlock uh, which was so guided to the end user and so developed, so well crafted for. Yeah. Which was very new at that time, mm-hmm. you know, those, those early disruptor um, uh, uh, SaaS companies were, it was really exciting at that time because, I mean, I, we were, we were talking about this earlier and the, you know, the, the balance of using technology to actually make life easier and to make more room for, what really requires, you know, personal touches, thoughtful um, workflows, interactions, you know, we're, we're always talking about what's the state of the technology we use now and how can, how can it really add benefit yeah. to, to what needs to get done? Um, so yeah, that was interesting. And then um, I'll take ownership of this part. She's just developing, <laughs> she's just <laughs> developing Doing this, well with my this practice <laughs> and, and and just as she's getting running on it, I was offered a job in California um, that was hard for us to turn down. And so um, I'm sorry that I uprooted your practice. I'm really glad it's going to be on the public record. <laughs> I was doing so well. And, and many thanks to Karen Grodell, Grodell and Associates, who took this huge chance on me, um, gave me an opportunity to sit in a law firm for the first time. As an outdoor cat, you can't imagine how challenging mm. it was i would get up have to drive to an office every day um but karen grodell and um uh, matt grimsley were just doing they they were so um such great mentors and so encouraging of my my sense of 
we can do things better. We can do things better. Um, and would constantly let me know that, you know, the ways that I had improved our efficiency, let me talk to our clients more, let me build better relationships with our clients, which then let me do better discovery because I would find some things very quickly, talk to my client, turn around, look for the next thing. And it was, um, really, you know, the, that process building was really cool. Yeah. So fortunately we had, we had a template for making those sorts of decisions because we had been in Philadelphia. I was initially barred in Pennsylvania. And so the way I really got into discovery work was I was living in Ohio with a Pennsylvania license and my options were limited and we had a baby. Um, so that's, I ended up, I started on, uh, with a review vendor at the time. And I went through this whole experience of, of learning this technology, learning these workflows, integrating myself with this, you know, sort of growing industry. And so then several years later, um, after I had been through a couple of law firms, I took this job in California. Thank you so much for making yeah. such a big change. <laughs> we had a template for, well, what do you do when you're in a new place and you're not licensed? Um, and to her immense credit, Alexis was like, well, I'm going to infiltrate your industry, Jeff. And, <laughs> and, and really has, has been on this really um, targeted and thoughtful trajectory to really understand the whole business of uh, electronic discovery and all of its ancillary characters. Um, and it's had this really wonderful um, you know, benefit of bringing us together in a, in a professional way that we hadn't experienced before and you know we're we're operating sort of in different you know areas of of the same game um and it leads to like really nice thoughtful conversations understanding each other um we don't have to bridge that gap that maybe other couples do who aren't sharing that space um yeah. and it's for for us at least it's been a really a really positive thing that keeps us close and and it sounds like the way that just from listening to the conversation here is that you know you you guys are identifying certain issues you're you know, you're using your lawyer hat to spot the issues when it comes to uh discovery and then you're applying your previous experience experience to say okay here's here's the issue here's you know some options that to to work toward um because a lot of times especially now um you're 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 using it to to solve a problem and now they're you know people are coming up with these great solutions and then going out and searching for the problem so it sounds like yeah. the benefit that you've had is is being able to kind of bounce ideas off of each other and saying hey, here's the issue i'm coming up with how how have you looked at this before is that kind oh, of absolutely. Been the benefit? I think there's there's no better example than i mean a lot of what I work in is very bread and butter and it's, and I don't, I mean, we full stop. We don't really talk about our individual work life that much, but we talk about the industry a lot because I know what I do. He knows what he does, but I want to think about the future. So I think the big place that we talk, we've been talking about AI a lot <clears throat> and about how like everyone. <laughs> right the solutions are there a big topic. for problems yeah for problems <laughs> that might not be there yet and it's a stepping stone the use of ai requires some foundational understanding that i think is still very lacking and also requires an just a a um a buy in to to technology that's still that we're still developing and so yeah well, and it's weird because all the technology that I've used throughout all my years of practice has been oriented toward, you know, basically cost centers. You know, let's let's use this technology to get this done as efficiently as possible, um, you know, in the best of circumstances, particularly from the client side. Let's save money. Let's let's and it's pretty siloed, right? Um, you know, you it's not a commercial tool that you're also making money from unless unless you're that's your selling it and then yeah. that's your business <laughs> but with with the development of ai which is and can be so close to discovery workflows with it also being this massive potential money maker it really raises really difficult questions and issues about how we're using it and how we're oriented toward it and how are using 
say, litigation compares with with its use on the well, business side. What we talk about a lot is like the human element. Mm-hmm. So I spend a lot. So I, I this is my first business development role. Before this, I was on the customer success. They call it customer success. What uh, do you do with the client once you once you've sort of had them buy in? Um, how do you do change management? How do you train them? How do you keep that keep the client motivated to use technology? Usually, they've been doing something that worked okay. How do you get them to stick with this this great solution? Um, so I, I'm sort of coming in differently. I don't come in. We talk about the trenches a lot. I don't come in from this like I survived <laughs> being up for 48 hours. I I came in with a how can we do this better? How can we avoid getting in the trenches? Um, and that that's not just the tooling. It's also how do you manage the people on the other end? How do you manage the end user? Like I said, I started kind of falling in love with this space through Everlaws, innovation and in, in end user and user experience. And so mm. with AI, it's like you can't it's not just the tool, you have to have a thorough understanding. Well you and I talk about that a lot. You have to know understand the tool that you're using the, in legal practice. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. How do you talk that's about the new it? skill set is how do you write prompts for large language models? Because it garbage in, garbage out. But before like, you write prompts, you have yeah. to know what you're talking to. <laughs> well huh? Yeah. Of course. Yeah, so- whole uh, umbrella of new new ways of, of kind of just even looking at at the issues uh, anymore so well, let me let me switch gears a little bit because you know we we've, we've uh, sat around the campfire here and sang the kumbayaza how great it is working in in the same industry but I'm sure there's some challenges as, as well um, I know you guys work together a little bit uh, in in your dad's uh, uh, law firm yeah, Alexis together. um and and so how is it now that you know you're you're in kind of the same you know big umbrella industry uh what what are some challenges that that you kind of run into uh along the way um I think you just almost got a taste of it <laughs> <laughs> Like, no, you have to think about the people. Like, do you know the same bickering that happens with every, like we mentioned, Jeff was tracking this, basically a philosophy PhD. And I was like, oh, I want to talk about like how art came and like what we should do with it. Um, And we, we can get into fights where we like leave the room from each other because (laughs) we have different ideas about how where technology technology should go in the future it's all it's very it's always like kind of hypothetical stuff yeah but then you know it's it's great like so it's one of those answers where it's both and right Mm -hmm. like so we'll be at odds because maybe we're really invested in our perspective i get i get like really like rah rah because i'm in this adversarial position all the time and a lot of times alexis has to be like step back jeff like oh yeah, your 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 interest <laughs> is not the only interest here, and it, and like that can lead to just arguments and tension. But for for me, I take that with me. I've already had the conversation to consider the bigger picture, and and I think that helps me to give better advice and implement better workflows and 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 have a little more peace uh, when I don't get my way um, as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it it just comes down to seeing it from different. Yeah, because I, I think about innovation a lot and you're you're very different. Your life, your work life is. And I talk about this at work a lot, that all of the work that comes out of all these technologies and all these tools is ascribed to the attorney. It's not no one says you can't go to a judge and say, oh, this discovery was incomplete because relativity failed in some way. Um, you know, yeah, it's well, in the same it's the attorney's AI. work product. It's- it's not the AI's um, issue if somebody does something wrong. It's the yep. attorney's issue. Who's on the plea? Yeah. yeah. Right. And I, you know, being on the tech side, I can be a little bit more bold and imaginative about where we can go. And it can get frustrating when I'm like, oh, I read this thing <laughs> and it looks really great. And I have this idea for this. What if what if we use this tool in this way? And sometimes Jeff can be a wet blanket about that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think we had a guest on a couple of weeks ago that said uh, the, the what was it the five worst things you can hear a client say is wouldn't it be cool if and then <laughs> goes off into a a, a thing so um, yeah and, it, and it's kind of I mean it's kind of nice that you can have these 
you know, arguments and still at the end of the day, you know, still live your life. Um, but, um, I, and I had someone on a separate podcast I did for the firm that, uh, recently said something about, uh, and he's a doctor just saying that it was really important to have, um, opposing views in the room and it's really hard to get those opposing views in a room because usually everyone's so busy um, that uh, you know even if they're very passionate about it, it's it's very hard to get get that. So I think there's you know a good opportunity there with the two of you having kind of two paths of, of how you approach problems of being able to you know bounce those off of each other even if it uh, means you know, bouncing it from a different room. Um, but, uh, it's, it's definitely, uh, you know, a, a lot of benefit after, uh, a- after the blood pressure comes back down, I imagine. Yeah. And honestly, if I make a fool in front of myself with her, it, it's less likely I do it at work. So <laughs> I'm grateful for that. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, so what happens when uh, you know you're you guys go to a reception or something, or you're out and people learn that that you're a couple? Is it? I mean, is it pretty well known? Uh, what what's kind of the reaction you get from people when you tell them? Um, so we're relatively new to the Bay. I think it's very. It, we were Ohio was different. Cleveland is different. It's a small town. Like, and I'd been there my whole life, and we knew everybody, and nobody cared what we did, and nobody cared. About- <laughs> we weren't doing anything all that interesting to to our local music scene, uh, so nobody wanted any detail. But now it's, it seems like a lot more of our social life happens at bar association, like mixers and stuff. Yeah, I feel like most people, most people have a "oh, that's cool" yeah sort of reaction to it. Um, I, don't, I think we've done a good job of filtering out naysayers from our spheres. Um, mm. <laughs> Yeah, Jeff only wants yes men in the room now. No, uh, that's not what I meant. <laughs> uh, no, I think people think it's it's just kind of cool, and I think people assume that there is more current synergy than there is. Um, our work is just so very different, and mm. especially your work is so much more like full litigation. And I'm thinking a lot more about the technology, and it's just it just very different so when i try to explain like really more what we talk about is like the news Uh, (laughs) it was a little bit different when i was with an with with everla and you would ask me to do like how to give you tech support (laughs) that was when it was more interesting yeah (laughs) um but now and we were just sort of delighted by it yeah and as i'm thinking about it i feel like because because we sort of entered into this work in in tandem with COVID, I think mm-hmm. it's less unusual for people because a lot of people, even if they had very different jobs, suddenly found themselves sharing office space at home mm-hmm. with their spouses. So I think people are a little less, um, a little less curious or um, or pressing about that because they're also used to it themselves. Um, so I don't think that there haven't been a lot of. I think that there are a lot of couples though around where both have found their way into this i think because it is really interesting and if you're in the legal space it it ends up it's it's just an enticing kind of work to get into because you can be innovative in a way you can't yeah and there's a ton of opportunity because it's it's changing so much there's always new roles and challenges that you can so i think people who are who are enterprising about how they want to spend their professional time like often gravitate here um and it lends itself to creativity in a nice way yeah yeah, we we have found once we kind of sprouted this yeah, idea oh, of doing the yeah, the uh, love and legal tech uh, series that there's a lot more people <laughs> out there in. than we we had anticipated. Um, um, so l- let me ask about the kind of the uh, we're calling it the work life integration. Um, so when you come home at night from from work. Um, do you have like a, a rule that says, you know, work stays here or is that how do you balance uh, the that so that it's not kind of a 24 seven thing? And I, I imagine having a couple of kids helps uh, do that. I was right? going to say we talk about so much else. I mean, we do talk about innovation a lot. And then mm-hmm. the work piece. Um, I think one of the for me, one of the nicest 
things in my, we, you know, sometimes I'll, it'll be like 930 in the morning and I'll be like, I just can't wait till it's nine o'clock PM and we can just turn on babes and butthead and <laughs> like not, and just not do anything anymore. Uh, story. <laughs> like we genuinely enjoy spending time together doing but any other we, activity. We don't, yeah, we don't. We have a lot we're of not like, yeah, we're not real rule setters about that. I think that, I think that. I don't think we need to. Yeah, be. professional talk is just part of the soup. Um, on the rare occasion that, that one of us raises, you know, a frustration or a curiosity about work and the other one's just not up for it. We just change the subject. It's. No, you, you listen, <laughs> you, you like performatively listen and I'm, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care right now. Do you, yeah, do you so go you know, to, do you, so many words. Do you go to your safe spot in your head or your safe place in your head? Is yeah, that what I you go, do? I, yeah, I go I, back and every set. He does. I'm hmm. more direct. Like I'll I'll <laughs> just be doing like I'll be doing something else and I'll just say, just so you know, I don't really care right now. I know I love that. I know you do. I do. Yeah. I like things that are definitive. <laughs> so um what are you guys doing and and, and I know uh, Alexis you're pretty new in in your position um but uh you know what what are you guys doing in your individual jobs that you find uh, that you're finding exciting lately um one of the things I've really liked about the work I'm doing uh currently is it's uh it's often novel um there's often something very new and 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 therefore kind of intense going on with the with the things I'm able to work on um so I'm never bored um, there's always some creative solution that needs to be found. And I work with a, with a really great group of people, um, that are, who are great to collaborate with. And so, um, I, I'm in a lucky position where I know that I'm going to have something interesting to work on every day. And I know that I trust my colleagues and enjoy being with them. Um, and that's my basic answer to that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do feel like we're both very lucky to be in roles that are well-resourced and, you know, there isn't, I don't know the last time I was like grumpy about work. It's, I think we're both like Australian shepherd dogs. You know, I think we're both like people that thrive with a lot to do and a lot of resources to do it. And we're very lucky to be in roles where we have that. Um, For me, it's, like I said, it's very cool to be at the uh on the front end of that client relationship at the start of the customer experience and the client journey the customer journey right um you know it's sort of like getting my hands on the wheel a little bit more um and and i'm coming at it from a place of of uh really thinking hard about other uh colleagues who've been in this in these business development roles asking just so many questions not just about how they do what they do but what the experience was like for them how they make decisions and and becoming not only you know my my roles as my role in customer success was as a trusted advisor but I also was able to be cross functionally uh, a, an advisor to the business development team um, and <laughs> I would sometimes get dinged on the not ding but like boy Alexis really likes those salespeople um, but I thought it was interesting how they were approaching these these relationships. Um, at the very start and so i would let them know hey this is what it's this is what the resources are downstream this is who i this is how i think you should scope it just given what i can see from where i am um and being able to jump over to the other side um is it's exciting yeah it's it's Mm -hmm. it's different than being the the co-pilot you know the navigator co-pilot it's (laughs) nerve-wracking um I'm not bored. I'm not as rehearsed at those conversations. Um, I could do, you know, intro trainings and all that onboarding program. I can write an onboarding program in a week uh, for any tool. But now it's I find myself feeling very. (laughs) (laughs) Well, now we're at the point where we normally ask our crystal ball question, but we've been uh, we've rebranded it for the uh, love and legal tech series uh, as our valentine's questions uh so what advice would you give another couple who are considering working in either the same field or working together in the same business so alexis let's start with you yeah it's my advice to to people who are 
thinking about getting married, right? Two pieces of advice. You better have fun. This person better be your friend. Like, this should be someone who is truly your friend, um, that you enjoy being with, that you have fun with. Um, and the flip side to that is advice my, my mother gave me, which was marry somebody that you can see yourself divorcing, which is a tough thing to hear. What, what did she mean by that? I, I know. Everyone's like, what do you mean? <laughs> to me, it makes perfect sense. Somebody that you can see, you can picture even the worst possible outcome and that person remaining um, of upstanding character mm, and okay. being kind to you and never holding their commitments and to you hostage to some some performance um, and my parents are were had the best of worst on the planet they showed never wavered in their respect for each other um i think partnership and collaboration whether it's work or a marriage or, or anything could could have a could end in a way that you don't expect um mm. and having the comfort of saying even in the worst case scenario this person will respect me and still uphold their commitments to me um, because work is very personal um, mm -hmm. this is why we fight about it but it is very personal <laughs> and that again a call a shout out to to Karen Grodell um, when I first interviewed with her she said work is so many people's identity and when you are discriminated at work or you have a problem at work or you have you know it it cuts so deep um, and so to bring your partner into that is I think very serious and uh, something you should consider, um, not just from a practical angle, but you know, it's not, it's not just, you can't clock out. Right. Um, it's part of your identity. That was a pretty heavy answer, but I hope that it's helpful. <laughs> yeah. I love that uh, answer. Yeah. I'm, I'm a little bit sun drunk right now. Uh, uh, <laughs> hey, yeah, Jeff, what's, what's your advice? It's going to be a little redundant, um, which is probably a good thing because it'll show that we're, you know, philosophically aligned, but you you have to you have to be friends and i think what i'll drill down on with that is you have to be curious about one another um you have to want to know what's going on and if you do it right working in the same area lends itself to that because you have a leg up on understanding what your partner is doing with her time and what she cares about and what her challenges might be but to me it's it's and it's, of course, it's a struggle, right? But, but giving your time and attention in a in a real way, like developing a true curiosity for what is going on with my partner in all aspects of your life, um, that's how you feel understood. That's how you keep and establish trust. Um, and I think that, as Alexis said, the, the answer is the same if you're talking about getting married or working together. It's just compounded a little bit. If you're if you're entering into think. yeah <laughs> no escape <laughs> if you're entering into that and I and I think that's it right like no escape right that's 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 the tough risk there right you're always together anyway you might have a family together now you work together where's this where's the valve right and right. so we do a great job I think of of trusting each other and, and having true curiosity for each other's lives and I think that's really important. We also do a great job of giving each other space. We're sitting in this um, this cabin in the desert that we have, and we'll go on solo trips here and give the other one some room. Um, and and I think that sort of thing, just understanding what what each person needs, um, what they're going through, and and being a true trusted support. Um, it's stuff we should be doing anyway. Excellent. Well, uh, Jeff Nimzura and Alexis Heyman, I want to thank both of you for coming on the Geek and Review and sharing your love and legal tech story. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, thanks to everyone listening for listening to the Geek and Review podcast. Uh, if you enjoy the show, please share it with a colleague. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. So uh, reach out to us on social media. I can be reached at uh, G Lambert or Glambert on X or more likely on, on LinkedIn. Uh, Marlene can be reached at Gaybauer M on X or Marlene Gaybauer on LinkedIn. Um, Alexis and Jeff, if people wanted to learn more uh, uh, about you, uh, where, where's a good place for to reach out? Um, LinkedIn is great. For me. I'm a LinkedIn girly, um, my favorite <laughs> social media platform. 
um, Alexis Heyman. I, there's right. only a couple Jeff. of us. <laughs> and the Jeff. same. And if you really want to dig deep, you can look up my musical project, Glowing Burns. Glowing Burns. We're on all the streams. Have to look, I'll have to look. I'll have to look that up. So, all right. Well, thank you both. And speaking of music, the uh, music from uh, Love and Legal Tech is from Jerry David DeSecca and his partner Eve Searles. So, thanks, Jerry and Eve. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks, Greg. Love and-